Welcome, this is Brian Henius with the Principal of Consultant with Sandpoint Consulting. Today I'm going to be doing a short presentation on creating a copy of an application within the OneStream product. So the first thing to get out of the way is in order to be able to make a copy of an application within OneStream, you need access to both the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio on the database server and the OneStream XF database configuration utility on the application server. The high level steps we're going to go through consist of creating a backup of the source OneStream database, restoring that backup with a new name, reconnecting the SQL database to the application server, and adding the application to the OneStream environment. The first step in creating a backup of a OneStream application is you need to back up the database. So we're gonna to go to Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio on the, the database server. I'm gonna go ahead and open up databases and we are going to find the database that we'd make to, like to make a copy of. In this case, I'm gonna do this OneStream new lab. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to tasks. In some cases, I if I'm taking a backup of an application that is currently online and there may be people logged into it, I can go to this take offline option and there's a box I can check to dis disconnect any users. That would force the, the database to be offline and, and have no active connections. Realistically, you shouldn't be taking a backup of a production system during working hours and uh, you may be able to do that with a DAB or QA system. You just wanna make sure that all your users are out of it. So we're gonna to go, to go ahead and go to backup. And here we have the correct database. We're gonna do a full backup. We're gonna do a copy only backup. And this location is fine. This is just gonna be on my SQL server. And I'll be able to navigate to that when I go to restore. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Okay, we get a message that the backup has been completed. We're gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna navigate here to databases again, and we're gonna go up to the top level, and we are going to go to uh, restore database. So we're gonna go ahead and click on here on device, because we've stored that as a copy. We're gonna add the location, and we're gonna add this backup that I just created. We're gonna go ahead, okay. And now we're gonna change the name because we'd like to have this a different, like this to have a different name. So we're gonna call it New Lab 2. So this all looks good. Now this option of tail log backup, a tail log backup is a backup that performs, uh, it looks for any transactions that may be lagging. So like late stuff that's coming across to make sure you don't get any data loss. The thing is, is a tail log backup will only work if there's been a full backup previously performed of the database. I haven't done that. And I've had issues with the restoration not working if I do a tail log. Now I'm making sure that nobody's in there and everything's closed down and quiet. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that tail log. And I can also choose to close existing connections to the destination database. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I can see I'm on my step. If I'm having an error, I won't reach the step of restoring the database. Okay, and I get a message that the, uh, the database was restored successfully. I'll go ahead and close that. And I, it's already appeared over here. I don't even need to refresh. So I see that I have my new database. So now that I've created a backup on my SQL server of the application that I would like to, re to make a copy of, I need to navigate to the application server. On the application server, you're gonna find that there's two utilities. One is the OneStream server configuration utility, 
and the other is the OneStream database configuration utility. You, may, you want to open up the OneStream database configuration utility, and you'll see that you have a list of the databases that are in your instance. On the databases, not on one of these databases, but actually the database header, you're gonna right click and click add a database connection. And then you're gonna go ahead and add the server name. Uh, this is the server name. This is your database server. And then you're gonna go ahead and click here and you're gonna find the environment that you restored. You can test the connection and verify that it succeeds and go ahead and click OK. You'll see that that's now been added. There's one more step though. You need to right click and you need to rename the application. It still retains the old name, so you need to change that to New Lab 2 and change my description, description to New Lab 2. Go ahead and hit rename. And are you sure you want to rename this? You go ahead and hit OK. And it's now been renamed. Now for the final step for making the copy of an application, you're gonna to navigate to the OneStream, either uh, through Internet Explorer to the Windows app, uh, or sorry, the online app, or you're gonna to go to the Windows app, I'm in the Windows app. And you're gonna to navigate to the System tab. And under uh, Applications, so under Administration and Applications, you're gonna to go to this option here to create an application reference. You click that button, and you're gonna to go to the OneStream database server and then in the schema name, the database schema name, you're going to give it the name of the environment that you created, the new name. So one caveat here is, is that you need to make sure that you add this opening part or else it won't work. So there's gonna be a prefix on here, one stream underscore in my case. I called it new lab two, but I need that one stream underscore. Click okay. And new lab two has now been created. And now let's verify, I'm gonna go ahead and switch applications. And now I'm able to log into my new copy. Just some housekeeping items to wrap up here. Here's some potential issues you could run into. Attempting to copy an application that is currently used could create some issues as you have people logged into that as data may be saved, you may not capture everything you need to capture. You may have some issues with permissions there. Not having su sufficient permissions to create or restore the SQL database in the SQL Server application. Obviously not having access to the application and database servers is gonna be a, a no starter on this. You could have an error in restoring the database because the option for tail log was not turned off depending on if you've done a full restore on your database or not. You can have an issue on not providing the correct database name. So I gave the example of one, one stream underscore. The, the key there is you just need to make sure that your database schema name, when you reassociate it in the one, in the one stream app, it exactly matches the database from SQL Server. And then one last thing, I didn't run into this issue, but you may need to recycle the IIS pools on both the application and database servers before you're able to restore connectivity.